For the most part, yeah. Uh, yep. On on my fifty seven hundred XT box, everything yeah. opens overlay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah, the the Steam Deck use, makes very heavy use of a uh, game scope. Uh, if you're using the um, <laughs> hello, <Oaks>, you <laughs> Nvidia. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how to, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. Vin Stone, that is Jordan Zwang, and over there, way over there. That is a Pedro Mateus, and together with the U-Shot Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form the Steam Update of the Week, because that's right next to Coke and Voltron. <laughs> oh, man, it's almost never been 10 years, old. and it never gets keep old, fucking baby. it up. Oh, baby, each week, new and interesting ways, that's what we strive for. We got a lot of, lot of stuff to talk about. Heavy on the Steam Deck, but hey, man, good news. Always good news, and um, interesting things going on with a rabbit beast gaming technology we're going to get into that as well but first we need to find out what pedro has been up to because he By likes to keep us laptops. waiting all week like, oh <laughs> he's gonna dish right at the end i'm like oh can't wait i, have not, I lied to really. my week uh week was very very busy at work but speaking of i i did get to whip my deck out at uh the office today because, uh, yeah, I had to go in the office today. <laughs> There's a lot more work that needs to be done, and it there was going to involve a lot of downtime and just waiting for things to happen, so I took my deck with me, mm-hmm. and um, I played a lot of Risk of Rain, the the first one, because... Uh, I, I thought yeah. that was your $300 Elden Ring machine. Uh, it is, but uh, since I, you can't connect uh, the uh, personal devices to... The Wii fees, I mean, I could, but you're specifically told not to. But so, yeah, I, I, I played just offline games and Risk of Rain was very much there. And I cranked up the uh, the speakers and yeah, it's it's how, it's a very nice battery? gaming machine. I like how much bat- <laughs> how much battery did you get playing Risk of Rain on it? Did you did you uh, come back home with it drained or was it? I came like, back uh, home. Um, it was. It was like uh, in suspend mode for two hours or so, but for the rest of the time it was on and blaring the Risk of Rain music out loud at least. Uh, and it came back with like Am I alone imagining um, Pedro alone at the office like a la Risky Business? Oh, yeah, some 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 light switch raves? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was no lights. All the lights were off because they put in new lights and they're stupidly bright and make my eyes hurt. So I keep all the lights off if it's just me. Uh, oh, but Pedro's in the office. How can you tell? Open story to you. <laughs> I, I, I have straight up hissed at people in meeting rooms when they turn lights on. When I was like, no, I, I came in here because it was dark and quiet. And here you have to come and ruin. Oh, no, me. man. That, that, that's too real, man. It was like, uh, people used to make fun of me in high school because it was an anime. Like, we didn't make fun of you because you were an anime. It's because you hissed at people. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of hissing at people, what have you been up to, j Baby? <laughs> Oh man, training's done. I I did uh, five weeks of massing. Uh, my 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 knees hurt. My elbows hurt. I have a week of deloading coming up, so I'm not gonna train. And then up next, I'm gonna try and hit that 405 bench, and I'm gonna hit that Ooh. 600 pound squat. How much weight do you have total? I have 600 pounds worth of oh. barbell weights. So right. if if I can if I can squat all the weights I own, then that's my excuse. I can right. already deadlift all the weights I own. So if I can squat all the weights I own, that's my excuse for having to go buy more. That that, that was the promise. Ah. So <laughs> that is fair, man. That is fair. Um, part man, part Canadian, lifter of heavy things. One Jordan's fine. Everybody. Wh- so. What about what about you, Ven? There, there, there's the timestamp, and I've been very curious about it all week. I might be angry with EVGA again, yet another week in a row. Okay. <laughs> it happens. I, I had to look this up. Um, 4721. Uh, this was 10 months ago. At 8.55 p.m., I gave up. I gave up. Uh, and by that, I mean... I gave up the chase. I, I, at that point, I was watching like the YouTube channels that were doing the in-stock pricing and all that stuff for video cards. And I'm like, maybe, maybe. And I'm like, you know what? Fine. Fine. I'll just EVGA to re- not reserve one, but like, we'll send you a notification if one ever gets back in stock at regular price. <laughs> like, yeah, what the fuck ever. Put that in. So never thought about it again because like everybody else, I've just resolved to, like, man, I'm not paying 
crazy prices for video cards. This is not going to happen. And Intel's like, let me break your heart a little more, old man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, it, it's it's the thing with the uh, what, what, what was it the three the three D effects resurrection people hoped yeah and then and yeah that, that, that's dangerous. the worst thing you can do the worst thing you can do is give people hope I I remember being on the show and I'm like you do not want to tango with the type of people that have like hard love for a video card company that hasn't been around for two plus decades man uh yeah I think like Monday or Tuesday that's where I get angry I get an email notification from EVGA. Saying, hey, things are back in stock, and which I immediately went, huh? What did I do? All right, fine. Oh, it's the 3060. I'm like, I go to EVGA, their website. Apparently, I wasn't the only person they sent an email to. It, it was making Reddit look snappy. Let's mm. just kind of give you, put that in. And I chugged through. I chugged through and it's like, you need to be logged in. Like, fuck. <laughs> that took like four minutes just to get to the. <laughs> and I log in. It's like another three or four minutes and it's not available. I'm like, yeah, I had to try. And then I, there's a like link in the email. So I try that. And I'm just like, fuck it, whatever. And I go to that. And it's like, not for this account not registered to this email account. I'm like, well, what the absolute, I, I don't have an account on the other email address. Do I? Then, you know, this goes to, I'm just curious at this point, open Google and, you know, do the password search. We've all done that dance, right? That walk of shame. I'm like, fuck, do I even have an account that, let me just type on this website. Couldn't find anything. And of course I just logged in. So I'm like, Hey, maybe I can just create an account from this email address. And all this is taking place at the speed of smell, too, because, again, this is EVGA. I try to create an account for that email address. Bot protection kicks in. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so uh, you, you got the video card, right? <laughs> right? Right? Fuck you, EVGA. <laughs> I was not happy. I was not pleased. I just wanted to take this moment to get that out of my system to let everyone know your bot protection is dog shit. 100%. Because I just used a VPN, bitch. Um, here it is. Hey. Uh-huh. <laughs> I got this for 369 That's pretty good. For yeah. that, that's close to MSRP, yes. <laughs> it's yeah, 30 that's- bucks or like $20 and some change over MSRP. I thought it was funny that it was three sixty nine, and after tax and shipping, it was four twenty. Excellent. <laughs> did, did 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 you smoke a fatty afterwards? <laughs> the celebration. And this is the most basic bitch thirty sixty they make. Uh, doesn't include include a include a backplate, which is a ginormous problem. I have a thread ripper, air cooler, <laughs> ah. which doesn't rest near it. Leans it into on it. <laughs> right. Ah. So the temporary solution right now is I've cut a piece of nylon and like the yeah, electrical tape it. or something. But effectively <laughs> nylon, but yeah, I yeah, cut a yeah. block out because you can't buy an aftermarket. You know, no one's going to bother with it, the super cheap one. And um, that's in there. It's working, and I'm going to spend uh, whatever the cheapest reliable water cooling system, I guess, to get in there so it doesn't. You know, go up and smoke. That don't, be- don't play New World then. <laughs> <laughs> or if you do, limit the FERPs, which is what I've been doing. <laughs> if uh, my review on the 3060, I've had it since Thursday. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I mean, it's smooth. If you get a 2060 or a 2060, oh, did, go did, ahead. Did you quake? Yeah. Did you quake, I, quake yeah, 2 I RTX? I did. Almost. Almost at 1080. It is like 58. Ooh. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Spicy. Big jump from low 40s, baby. Spicy. Um, no, just to be honest with you, like raw gaming form, I did not get this for gaming, uh, but I did check a cycle. Um, we're seeing like maybe seven, five to seven, sometimes 10% performance. I mean, it's if you have a 2060... And you're just concerned about like 1080p, 1440p gaming, not worth any money at all. Like, especially <laughs> if you got a 2060 
and like raw rasterization performance, this thing like trades blows with the 1080 Ti. So keep that in mind. Nothing against the 1080 Ti. It's just like two generations it's, it's, old. It's, it's, right. a, it's a five year old card now, right. man. Like, I'm, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Technology has progressed. Exactly. Yeah. It did the one thing that I was able to load HEVC X265 UHD capture that I do into DaVinci and fuck mothering scrub through it. It's just like, mm, okay, I'm happy. All that, that did it right there. And like, that's what daddy wanted. Plus this is hundred percent for rendering with fusion DaVinci. If you ever look at some of the UHD videos, cause you should be putting out UHD videos these days, 4k is there'll be some very interesting edits in some of the videos where I've had to work around the limitations of the 2060 because <laughs> it would run out of memory trying to do certain things. I'm like, Hmm, how can we cut that out and maybe we can do that? So yeah, I got it. I got it almost MSRP. I think the original MSRP was what? 330. No, it was yeah, 339 ish. Yeah. Or yeah. Something around there. That's that. That's not a bad price. It's not a bad price. Uh, New Ike was just full of it because it's at MSRP three ninety nine. I'm like, bitch, no, I, I know that, and so it had a discount. The, three, the thirty sixty Ti was uh, three ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're, those, those was the old times, uh, but yeah, three thirty nine. So uh, I, I guess I got to be the one to pull the trigger on the Intel card. Then here's hmm. the thing, though, I, I, I'm. <laughs> That is I'll go like for the AMD then. <laughs> legitimate sadness because Intel, this should have been an Intel box, but Intel just fucked right off with like, yeah, we don't know. We live, Hey man, we released that at laptop in uh, Korea sometime, but no word on <laughs> yeah. release dates yet. So just wait around fuckos. And I'm like, I, I needed this two years ago, bitch. So yeah, first come first serve. And I'm not the only one in that situation. Intel. At this point, everyone who had a really nice GPU, thank you very much again, Wimpy. This is apparently going to rock on. This 1080 is going to rock on for as long as it needs to. Uh, yeah, Jordan's got to get something. Looking. You got a Steam Deck. I got <laughs> yeah, a nice yeah. render card, so you're due now. Also, you're wa- to- see, this is the one time I was confident in buying a video card, and I'm not able to come on your welcome, everyone, for the prices dropping that's not <laughs> well no because like because like here, here here's here's the thing though i know with my luck i i had the bendy bug i had the math bug with the with the i7 i had i had the fucking 20 2080 getting announced two weeks after i buy my 1080 ti like mm-hmm. i'm doing you all a favor by not <laughs> by not buying anything if i had if i had pre-ordered a steam deck it would have gotten delayed by like a year let's be real mm-hmm. or they would have they would have been like oh yeah steam deck too you guys for everyone but Jordan. I don't know. And as much as I hate to say it, if you are in a position because, you know, they're still marked up, all all cards are, but far less than, you know, if it's like 30, 50 bucks and you're planning on getting one, I'm not the only one who said this. Um, we were talking about it in the pre pre super shows and I won't go into like super details, but if you got the money and you, it's available, get it now because it's going to be a long time before they're going to be available again. Oh, that's not, and I don't care who you buy AMD, NVIDIA would have been Intel, but no. Yeah, yeah. it would have been really nice Intel. Right? <laughs> yeah, <well. laughs> play, play, play that sad fucking violin, and man. You know, like, okay, you want to hear some, like, conspiracy theory shit I got going on with Intel, though? What, 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 what? Uh, this is, like, for my brothers and sisters out there who are streaming. There's been a lot of movement on the back end of OBS for getting HEVC and uh, the AV1 but, stuff. Yeah, that, that's what it's smelling like. Like, and they wouldn't be doing that kind of movement just because Intel said so. There would have to be a place to put it too, which I'm guessing we're going to see AV1 encode ingestion on probably Twitch. Mm. So, oh, so you you, th- you think they're trying to like get all the ducks in the row so they can release that and have everyone right and they have it on release day and it's ready and all the stuff is in there and all of a sudden you can do 1080p 60 streams at three megabits and it's going to look good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, speculation though. Uh, unlike the horse, which doesn't have to be speculated on, because that <laughs> motherfucker's still running a GTX 480. Dude, like we we need better bot protection against the horse because it's being rebuilt like Mecha Godzilla. It's like coming coming through our town, blowing shit up. It's the Steam Linux update. Well, 
Ain't that a stab in the chest? Uh, yeah. So uh, the first story from Tom's Hardware. Uh, yeah, the Steam Deck. It's it's popular. People people like it. Um, appar- appar- apparently nowadays we're we're calling the 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 uh, SOC on their Aerith, like the Final Fantasy VII character. I don't know. Is is, is Squeenix going to sue someone? I thought I thought it was Pedro. Bigger. Be careful. If you drop it, I won't be able to see it. So wait, wait, <laughs> hold hold on. But uh, but so Tom's Hardware has done a little bit of forensic math magic here. Um, so uh, based based on uh, Elden or uh, based on the Steam Deck's position on the bestsellers by revenue chart on Steam, compared to its position based on Elden Ring, uh, they 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 did some math magic, like I said, and they've they've come to this number. About a hundred thousand consoles have been sold. I don't I don't I don't know though. Uh, cons- considering that, like, also it's sales by revenue and because valve makes it they get 100 percent of the revenue i also find that position a little suspect but even even if it's half, half that even if there's fifty thousand consoles right that's still there's still demand for it um yeah. and it, it sucks for anyone who wants one mm. well you make and, it that point in there you know anybody that wants one the one thing about the steam deck unlike um video cards right now and gpus right now there's no markup on the Steam Deck outside of like this is the initial price, but it has this great advantage of you can get in queue and you will eventually get one. You don't have to mm-hmm. compete in a lottery system. You don't have to deal with, mm-hmm. you know, Valve's not like, here's your Steam Deck and you got to buy these 30 games that no one but wants. <laughs> no exploding power supplies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, as a gaming device, even, you know someone who's used to playing on the mouse and keyboard and very much appreciates the mouse and keyboard it's it's nice it feels good it's uh yes it is big if you're a child or about child sized you're you're, you're gonna get shamed at an airport carrying that shit around man right (laughs) that's fine I, i will have to go to portugal at some point so i look forward to the comments from the airport people when i whip out my deck uh, when they I, I, I look forward to your Steam Deck yeah, getting confiscated right. by the airport security people. <laughs> There's a lot of places I'd take, pull my deck out or even take. Portugal, not one of them. See, I'm going to Portugal and I'm going to leave it in the place that I'm staying. <laughs> I, again, I don't trust the people who work at those airports. Mm. <laughs> All right. Uh, there's been a couple of dates. We'll get a couple of Steam Deck stories right at the beginning, we but don't do. worry. There's more because of the uh, fast decks. UI speed. Well, is that a problem? I, I know Strider's mentioned it, I think. and I- <laughs> It was a problem if you had a very, very big um, library, like, okay. say, uh, 2,000 games-ish right Here. around there. Wow. How, how, yeah. how much train simulator DLC do you own? <laughs> how many games do you have? I mean, I thought I, I'm, I probably have over a thousand games, which is in my mind, it breaks me just thinking about yeah, that number because I have I'm, like f- around 1500 games on Steam. So yeah, comparatively speaking, my account is positively tiny. 980, but, uh, not quite a thousand. Okay. Yeah. But it is, um, it, even on the Steam Deck, it's noticeable. If you're scrolling down, um, once you if you hold down the button and it starts going faster, it just starts actually slowing down the entire system. And if you use the triggers to skip some, it it, it affects performance. But uh, yeah, the new update, new client update has a bunch of fixes, including further performance improvements. And um there was the issue when they introduced the new um, UI for the Steam desktop client. It had the exact same problem, so I guess they m- might have forgot. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, uh, they, 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 they also added some like dead zone configurator stuff because, you know, the controller dead zones. That's a bit of a problem with all these crappy joysticks out there. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it's, it's good to see that they're they're improving stuff. Um the, uh, the, the, there's talk about the so-called final release of Steam OS. I don't think that's going to happen. It's Arch Linux. It's a rolling release. That's how that's how Steam OS is going to be. I think they right? meant that more of a like generic device version of Steam OS, not a deck. Just the deck recovery image. <laughs> yeah, I mean, may, may, maybe, maybe. So I don't know. check this out, man. You got a Steam Deck. You don't know what to do with it. You tired of charging it? You put it in the microwave. It only worked once and didn't charge it up. <laughs> Tune into the pre pre super shows and if you want that conversation. Uh, <laughs> but when you like at launch, real early on, 
Valve was like, hey, we're going to release a doc for that. To which I think I wasn't alone. Collectively, like, here, uh, because I have that little pullover thing. But you're going to get an upgraded doc if that is going to be your jam. Look at that. That 100% just looks like a uh, cable messetron, man. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, not very, it's not very nice looking. The, uh, the the switch dock is a lot more um, a lot more compact. You kind of just drop stuff in here. Well, the good yeah, news, the-, the good news for this, uh, you're going to get the gigabit Ethernet, which has mm. just been confirmed. I mean, I think everybody assumed it, yes, but you're going from one to three, right? Uh, USB one, three. Uh, yeah, uh, originally yeah. it was shipping with just one uh, USB three point one and two USB two, and now they're saying. Um, that they're going to be shipping with three USB threes, which is, you know, nice. All it's going to, it's going to be good for uh, plugging like an external drive into your steam deck dock, deck dock. I don't, I don't, what, what are we going to, our, 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 no, our, stay yeah. deck dock. <laughs> deck dock. <laughs> uh, I'm just but saying. yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not a fan of that. Like over, over, over the top uh, charging cable. I get they need to do that because the charging port is up on the top of the steam deck, but yeah, it, it does. It, it, it lacks that aesthetic factor that I think people really look for in a dock. Otherwise, like, why not just use like a USB three dock? I was going to pull the one out of my work machine, but no, that's a bad idea. <laughs> well, you know, I, me and Pedro were having a bit of back and forth. So like, well, you know, you remember to pick it up and unplug it and all that. I say that doesn't survive. Fuck. I'm late heading out the door, grabbing the dock. Guess what? That shit's coming with you. <laughs> I think it will come with you up to a point because those cables like the ethernet cable and the display port cable those have little hooks that aren't going to let it go. So uh yeah, I think you might oh. need to replace a type C cable You that say that Pedro, but we have yeah. evidence that you can let go of the um display port cables. You can? Yes. Yeah. You can, but you have you, to you, try you underestimate real hard. You underestimate my power, Pedro. I, I will fucking destroy that <laughs> Deck. Uh, not not even intentionally. It's gonna be like whoops, snap. But yeah, the, actually, the the way that the dock is uh, laid out makes a lot of sense because if you're looking at it from the front, it's hiding all the cables, and if you have it like towards the back of the desk, can't see the cables at all. You just have the little tip, and if you reach your hand to grab it, you're probably going to feel the little thing and just yoink on it. See, I also say two things though. You also got to remember to plug that little bastard in. Yeah, because yep. <laughs> you know, what? subconsciously, as with pretty much any device with a dock, once you put it in the dock, it starts charging. Yeah. One one thing I think deck deck two is really going to need for their dock is have like a PCI hole, right? Like stick it stick a GPU in there. You know, if maybe I was joking last week when I said put a full sixteen by sixteen on the top <laughs> of it. So you could- yeah. No, but seriously though, I think that's that's a good idea extends the life of your deck i wonder like whatever the milliamp uh batteries capacity is the deck i can't name it off the top of my head how long that would power a 3090 ti uh 20 20 30 milliseconds maybe yeah. <laughs> it's 4000 or 4400 one of them mm-hmm. so a 3090 ti yep i want to say like two minutes but i don't think it'll be two minutes <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I ran across this a little bit earlier, and I saw Pedro was like, hmm, maybe I want to nibble on it. Yes, one click. Uh, you may uh, remember we talked about all of, well, not all of them, but there's a bunch of different projects out there trying to bring emulation to the deck. And this one, Retro Deck, well, uh, they have one very, very big thing going for them, uh, which is it's a one-click install from the Discover um, software uh, package manager on uh, SteamOS, or if you're using KD on any of this, really. And uh, it comes with a very, very nice uh, and very, very deck screen friendly um, theme for emulation station right out of the box you don't need to like all the other ones you need to download the thing and then set up retro arch and then you install emulation station this just comes with everything and emulation station with one click look yeah okay this one i might actually try because yeah i can't really what, go what, <laughs> what 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 are you looking at emulating on the deck what what would be your first go to uh mostly psp games i have okay. like Literally all of the UMDs that I ever bought, I dumped them because, yeah, the Sony decided to be, uh, 
well, Sony, <laughs> and remove Sony the ability to run Homebrew. No. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, yeah, I put custom firmware on my PSP, and every single game that I bought, I am DISO. Because, yeah, <laughs> that, mm. if all right, you're going right, to so. do it like that, I'm going to do it like that. <laughs> so that's something, uh, what about, like, I mean, it's one click with a flat plaque. That's good to see. And it's built on top of an emulation station, right? Yeah. Yep. Emulation. <laughs> So good. Go out oh, and yes, if you're wondering, it allegedly even supports the Yuzu switch. Yes, that, uh, that, Yuzu that, that, and PCS X two. No word on RPCS three. <laughs> Which, it's despite a- what Nintendo would have you believe, <laughs> should be considered. We're talking about the Switch, a retro gaming console. But yeah. <laughs> our RPCS three is uh, is an app image though, so like I, I don't think getting it up on uh, SteamOS is too tricky. Oh yeah. No. <laughs> Hey. What about Proton? Because you're going to be using that with SteamOS. Oh, yes, you are. It's impossible. <laughs> In fact, you it's probably like already fonts. are. <laughs> it's like installing fonts on Linux. You can't do it. I don't know, man. There's some, listen, there's some holdouts. I see them on Twitter. And like, remember when Linux gaming was about Linux gaming? I and saw that tweet too. Okay, you yeah. saw that? I didn't respond. I was like, ah. <laughs> no. I was going to, yeah. It's like, yes, I remember the bad old days. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, Proton, you new version. Out. I don't want to listen to your <laughs> hacking Windows code trickery. Remember, what, remember when we had Killing Floor and nothing else on Steam? Yeah. I've been a lot of <laughs> that that, that first yeah. week was rough. Wasn't it? <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, Proton uh, 7.0-2 is now available. And if you watched uh, or listened to last week's episode... You probably know that uh, Valve was asking for um, commentary because they had a little bit of a release candidate uh, preview for uh, this version. And I mentioned, yeah, this is effectively everything that or most of what is on display for um, for experimental. And yep, there it is. It's out now. It's the big it's the big release, in my opinion, because it's the one that makes Elden Crack work with the stable version of Proton. Uh, without needing to use experimental and without needing to uh, futz around with anything else, you just install Elden Ring and it pulls down 702 and uh, the EAC runtime. So it's the actual first version of a Proton that has an EAC enabled game in it. Just very huh. nice to see. It's yeah. <laughs> it's, I mean, I mean that that's good. It it means that like you're you're not going to be have, you're you're going to be able to not have to enable experimental to get access to those games. There's yep. one thing in here that I thought might be interesting. The Horizon Zero Dawn fix, maybe in reference to Linux TikTok's mid game slowdown on the Steam Deck. I remember that was a thing that he had reported a while ago. So I think maybe they have. Uh, oh they have right, he got like to, a couple uh, hours into it. And- yeah, okay. yeah, it, it, it ran fine for like the first half, and then in the back half, it just eats shit. So I think that was. Uh, that was get, that's getting fixed, which is always good. Uh, what's in what's in the experimental now, uh, Pedro? You put you tossed uh, not the in the much. That, that's the thing, yeah. Because steering wheel detection, it, yeah, yep. like. and uh, they upgraded uh, wine mono is now version seven two and uh, VKD three D and uh, DXVK. If you're on bleeding edge, you're always getting the get master after like yeah. thirty minutes or so. Which I um, am because this does not contain. There, there's uh, one, two things I'm looking for. One. The uh, not human fall flat. The other one, fall guys. Fall guys. Fall guys. Yeah. I'm waiting for it to fix the thing because I suffer from the not having a copy of Windows to launch it. And some people like Jordan just got lucky. And when you, I, I just, your, I just linked my Steam and Epic yeah. account, and then it worked. So, <laughs> but I don't know can, what to tell you. Unfortunately, Jordan can play it about as much as I can. I have the perpetual <laughs> loading screen because it's trying to ask me how old I am. And, uh, yeah, well, you're too you're too old to play Fall Guys, and ob- <laughs> obviously, it's it's for it's for ages like right. twenty and under. Right? <laughs> Stranger like, danger, but no man. Um, I want that to get fixed because that'll be a fun after show game. And uh, the Jedi Knight game that Aldius got me, that Pedro, uh, you have it. Fa- fa- um, Fallen Order. Uh, yeah, the Souls, uh, Star yeah. Wars Souls, <laughs> uh, un- Uncharted Dark Fallen Souls Order. Jedi Edition. Yeah, uh, it's nothing like Souls. It's actually fun. Uh, but <laughs> it's got a small bug to where, like, if you open the screen in your <laughs> options, it just hangs. Yeah, if you go to the inventory, uh-huh. if you go to like the character stats, little tiny it, bug, 
They'll hold up. It, uh, either the performance goes to poop or uh, the game just freezes. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, one game that's uh, that's playable now that I re- I'm kind of interested in is uh, Chrono Cross Radical Dreamers Edition. A, because I've never actually played Chrono Cross before, and I don't think anyone has played Radical Dreamers because it was on, like, Nintendo TV in Japan for, like, 20 minutes. Yes, and uh, only in Japan. Yeah. And only and only in Japan. So I, I'm actually interested in checking that out. So I'm keeping an eye on it. There's a lot of Japanese games, probably because there's a lot of people in Japan going, you say, oh, Steam Deck. We like. I thought that was going to be a lot more racist. I'm glad. Yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about something that might eventually find its way to the deck. That's Portal Three because VGC <laughs> Video Games Chronicle, like everything else in the show notes, uh, head over to our web zone if you want to find the links. The Portal Three writer says he wants to start Portal Three because <gasps> he's not getting any younger. All right, you know what? This is a this is a trend among among people who age. It does happen. But I was reading through this, and my takeaway from this was he kind of dishes, I guess this was public information. I don't know, uh, unless somebody else knew. Uh, Valve has about 300 employees. I thought it was going to be a little bit bigger than that. Like, huh. Yeah, that, 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 is, that is pretty small, all things considered. Uh, yeah. yeah, for yeah, but- a company that size. And uh, you know what? Uh, do we want? Uh, okay, now, I got to put this the right way. Tactfully. <laughs> <laughs> the as we learn, like the the people with the talent, drive, and motivation to get a game made, are they still at Valve? Because those people who wanted to make another Left for Dead game are no longer at Valve. So <laughs> is any part of that team? Because it's not as simple as like, hey, let's make a game. I mean, you got to get the team together, and you got to push it yeah. through i mean it's not yeah you, you, you know. gotta got do like the the, the pre-production you gotta like create and produce it you gotta do all that shit so here 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 here's my thought on that is yeah the, the people who wanted to make left for dead 3 went left valve and went back to turtle rock the quality though isn't the same one one thing i will say about valve is they their, their releases are few and far between but it's they're usually of a lot higher quality than your standard release right so i I don't, at a certain point, like I, I, I can applaud the willingness to throw stuff out if it's not working and start from scratch. But yeah, like uh, like the like uh, Eric says in in this, um, get getting people like together and motivated to like start and finish a project and actually drive it to completion is not a thing that's in Valve's DNA. Art like Artifact wasn't a bad game per se. It was just no, not if you want to make it, excuses it, it, for it. I don't know. It, 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 it was Valve just, thought like, it was a bad the, the, game. <laughs> There, there was just no market for it. That, that's it, right? Yeah, the the game mechanics themselves, it was a boring ass game. Yeah. The, th- but at a technical level, if you were to compare any Valve release technically to any of the bullshit unfinished games that get released nowadays and get patched afterwards, Valve has always done a much better job of that. <laughs> yeah. So, so that, 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 that's 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 all I got to say. Add to that conversation is yeah, yeah. The releases are few and far between, but they are like better quality releases. Do we want? It? Does the world want a Portal Three? Like, and will they yeah. be happy with it? I mean, <laughs> everyone wants more Valve games. Everyone wants more Portal, more Left 4 Dead, more yeah. Half Life. Uh, but they, you, you, all you those can't games call it have Portal two 3, things though. very much going <laughs> against them. Is Valve Valve doesn't need money and be. Uh, they're kind of leaning into the like, well, it would just be too much. The expectations well, are too high. Now, I, we did I, kind of see I that with real- um, Half Life Alex because they're like, well, let's go on a little side mission here with Alex and not. Uh, you get to the end of the game and it cuts back to the thing. It's like, oh, ooh. <laughs> and, you know, you're, you're watching this, you know, a couple of years in the future and your son's going, Alex, who are you talking about? I never saw Alex in uh, uh-huh. Half Life Two. That's because the Star Fox actor has come out of retirement for Half Life Two mod that oh, replaces yeah. Alex with a sexy blue fox. So, so, the, 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 so here, here, here we go. We, we need we need to rewind ah. this way back when. Oh yeah, okay. Them, them, them cheeks. So, um, once upon a time, uh, GameCube came out. Uh, there were there were some release titles. One of which was a brand new Star Fox game that uh, promised the to jiggle. be crazy, <laughs> cra- crazy, and a new experience, but. But it turned out to be starring a, not Star Fox, but a sexy blue fox lady named Crystal. Uh, there's a mod now that replaces Alex Vince from Half-Life 2 with that. 
And, you know, much like Lola Bunny from Space Jam or Ron Perlman from Beauty and the Beast, Crystal was the direct cause of a lot of sexual awakenings of some preteens and furries and what, what have you. And as such, people have developed, let's call it a fondness for the character. So what's neat is they actually got the OG voice actor of Crystal from Star Fox Adventures, who apparently got out of acting entirely to reprise the role. So they must have some very, very good blackmail. Pedro, I, I know what you're going to say next. Yeah, I, I saw that in the article. They had to modify the 3D model because uh, apparently Crystal is a little too uh, curvaceous. They got that uh, they got that shit from uh, from a hentai site. Yeah, no, that's that's that, that's that. There's a lot of jiggle there. Like she moves and just, no. <laughs> Do you, you think do you think havoc can be designed for breast physics? Was was was, was, was that I don't one of the think use the cases? The first engine was made to accommodate that. No. I don't Much know. more practical uh, sort of body builds. I got a thing like a lot of people out there uh, to the rarity of it, not knowing what the hell a crystal was. I looked it up online. That was a mistake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, when, the, when the when the first link is rule thirty four. <laughs> Uh, that, that's risk click each to their own, man. I don't judge. I mean, not hurting anybody, but here's my, here's my take out parents, parents and older siblings. If you got somebody young in your life that you're supervising, hear me, you know, you're going to expose the kids, be them yours or whatever to the half-life series at some point. It's, it's just part of your gaming education. So you want to make sure you have this mod installed. So the youths will grow up thinking this is absolute canon until that day at school, they find themselves arguing about, no, yours is broken. Yours doesn't have the fox lady in it. No, th this is <laughs> going to be like a major schism. Fox. It's, it's, it's going to be the parents <laughs> who install the mod versus the parents who didn't install the mod. Mm. And, and, that's, and that's how our country collapsed into civil war. Because oh, all because of the sexy blue fox. <laughs> I don't uh, the sexy fox, yep. <laughs> Not against it. I think like a lot of mods of this sort, uh, on the technically they're well done, but they they don't they're always overdone in my opinion. Not always, but the ones I've ever seen. Um, yeah, we're, 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 there's a way more care out. put into the model right. than right. every other model in the game. They're, they're not matched, you know, with the environment. You're like, okay, you know, it's too shiny. It moves yeah, too much. The lighting yeah. is just wrong. <laughs> but hey, man. You know, if you so, wanted a giant blue fox lady in your half life, follow, follow you around. Uh, but uh, what's what, what, what's what's the name? Estelle Ellis. If we if we can get Estelle Ellis on the podcast, I got some <laughs> questions I want to ask her. Uh, coming up next, we're gonna turn your crank, baby. Hopefully, we don't break it off. Oh yes, the steamy news. Uh, well. What whatever's left of the horse by now is probably still going to be there by the time we come back to it next week. So don't you worry. Uh, there's uh, there's more news though. Yes, but before we get to them, we need. Well, we need to do this song and dance. You probably we, know we, what it is. You've probably been we have watching to prostrate long ourselves to you yes. people. It was amazing. So, I couldn't believe that. Uh, you know that giant life size Barney walked by in Jordan during the steam segment. Yeah, it was, it was it was it was it was crazy. Yeah, but you know what they say: I love you. It's a shame you, you skipped me. over that. You better go back and yeah. watch. We're, we're we're a happy family from Arkansas. Uh, if, <laughs> you wanna, if you want to if you want to join our our Targaryen esque <laughs> incestuous family, head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash Linux Gamecast. You can have sex with your own cousin, or you can <laughs> become a no oh, no brother brother. <laughs> Uh, and anyways, uh, become, become a Patreon, get access to cool shit like our Discord channel, which you can also get by subbing to us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. You blah, blah, will get blah. access to the pre-pre-super shows, which is an extra yeah. hour content we do each and every week for everyone behind the scenes stuff, but up to and including a Game of Thrones conversation and whether or not yes. we would bother rewatching it in 2022. Go, go definitely check that out. Uh, you get some other cool stuff by becoming a Patreon as well. You can get access to our show notes. You can watch the show, the show congeal over the course of the week. Uh, you can, oh, let's be honest. You can watch everyone like lackadaisically going through stuff and like, shit, it's Friday. Hey, 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 Wednesday is my day for that shit. That's, that's the only time I have time for that shit. Um, it's yeah, Friday I, for me very much. Yeah, uh, I, I, access to the show notes. Uh, you can RSVP to game stream, streams. I do some multiplayer stuff on Thursdays sometimes. Ven does Track Mania on Tuesdays and Fridays. So if you want to join in on that nonsense, you need to get in on our Discord. Speaking of Patreon, we got a brand new Patreon we got to thank. 
Eat your piggy, piggy, piggy. It's swine. So Pedro, <laughs> tell, 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 tell us about our, our newest Patreon. What's one thing nobody knows about? Sven? <laughs> Sven? Yes. I, I, I was going to say Sven because there was a King Sven of England and Denmark. Was there a King I think. <laughs> I'm going to no. petition to have you removed. Never. <laughs> From the country. Fight, fight me. For once, it's not me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, do you have any we, we, interesting facts for a new patron? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, King Svein uh, was actually the son, uh, according to the bit of history that I'm reading here, was the son of Harold Bluetooth. I'm not uh, joking. Ah, so, 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 so he has his father's connectivity issues. I see. Right. Yes. Uh, so, uh, sp- speaking, speaking, speaking of, we got a store, store.linuxgamecast.com. If you want to buy some LGC apparel, rep the show, confuse people on the street, at your, at your office, in the grocery store, at the hospital, Look at, at your lawyer's we were office. We just talking about t-shirts, man. Walking up to somebody with Linux paraphernalia or sitting behind him on a plane. You're like, hey, and if you got this on, you can support Linux. When people leave you that alone. Yeah, like, no, nope, no one's, no one's going to talk to you with a use me penguin <laughs> on, on you. Uh, yeah, what else do we got? We got Wish Zones. We If you head on over to linuxgamecast.com, put your mouse over the support button. I have one. Ven has one. Pedro has one. Jill has one. If you want that's to That's not a bad help, price. Yeah. Is this uh, yours? Or? Yeah, that's, that's, I think that's mine. Yeah, buy me shit. That's mean. Buy me shit. Uh, yeah, so if you uh, if you uh, want to buy us some crap to help us make the show happen, uh, yeah, you you can you can do so. You can send us a little note uh, Pedro, that we'll have you to read on fun? air. <laughs> uh, there's a couple of yeah, like the keycaps for the uh, a, a file set <laughs> or the uh, the um, shaving machine. <laughs> Lockpicks. Oh man, <laughs> there's the lockpicks at the top, yes, but the rest is just typical uh, computery stuff. We got one for the studio. If you want your name on the wall behind me. Uh, yep. This is the least blinky fucking water cooler that exists in the. And it still it, has some RGBs on the pump. And it still got shit on it. Right? Are, are you, are you going to put some electrical tape over it just so that it doesn't shine through? I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, this is a bunch of studio stuff if you want to get anything. Um, I don't want to do a water cooler, man. I didn't buy the Noctua because I. Don't, don't you already have an AIO water cooler for something? Uh, junk box. Thank you, Arthur. But. Yeah. That that's a constant source of like there's a thing that could drip. You know what? This knock to a cooler, it's big, it's chunky, it likes to rub against GPUs, doesn't leak. Um I it's gotta get done. Anyway, if you want to potentially break our streaming computer, hey, go for it. <laughs> it may, make it extra soggy. Uh but yeah. Hey, thanks for letting us do this. We've been doing this uh, almost ten years or ten years, I don't know. Like uh, close, close 520 is coming. <laughs> I mean, we we straight up <laughs> fucked something up last week, and people watched the show on YouTube. I don't know who's to blame for that. Back, yeah. back for blood. It's I'm like, blame what did I say? What was, was it something I said? I, I don't know. I, I don't I'm, know I'm, I'm word say narcissism. So. Um, what you what said mean? the word is Pedro, and that's <laughs> unacceptable. The, oh man, uh, that is kind of brilliant. But yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us. And if you want to hang out with us, if you're a Twitch sub or uh, Patreon, just link to our Discord. That's where we're hanging out the other six days of the week, talking the nonsense. But we need to pink. Yeah. Speaking speaking of uh, cranking oh, yes. Pedro. <laughs> yes. Uh, that, that is something uh, we may engage in at some point in the future, but not right now. Right now, what you can do is pre-order yourself a play date. This is not getting any better, <laughs> but uh, yes, it is. Uh, tell tell it, us about it, this play date of yours with your crank, you, Pedro. You crank your play dates. <laughs> have have, have, have yeah. a crank on your play date. Yeah, you can crank my play date anytime. Uh, well, maybe anytime in 2023 because uh, apparently those pre-orders they're backed up. But yes, it is that little yellow thingy that you keep seeing popping up everywhere. And there was, I think it was Wario 64 on Twitter that put it on the Steam Deck, so I know about how big that is, and that is teeny tiny, and it has a very um. G- black and white and uh, non-backlit uh, screen. And uh, people were complaining about it, like actually complaining about it. It's like, okay, 
that thing is tiny and the crank it's not a charging crank <laughs> that that's actual input for the games that some of the games that you'll be playing which no one will use probably because if you have the alternative of just using you know the d-pad and the buttons you're gonna use them but that I crank, the crank will was break for charging like no why, why have it otherwise <laughs> for fishing games for bass pro hunter uh, the the game that they showed off was uh, had a very similar mechanic to the gardens between you know that one about going back and forwards in time. Uh, okay. Yes. I don't know. Having for the first time just watched the um, pitch video from Bullet Plug uh, with the promotional from the creators and like yeah those look like the type of people that would put a crank on a fucking thing that doesn't charge. It. I don't want to say hipsters, but I already said hipsters. If you're, so yeah, might if, as well. <laughs> if you're going for the look, man, own it. Which they do. They do. I don't think there's any shame in that whatsoever. Um, hmm. You yeah, know what? I, you know what? To what Pedro said, if you order one today, now if you already, if you were, I didn't think these were going to ship. I was kudos for actually getting product shipped. That is the 99 percent perspiration. They're going out to people, right? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, but if you ordered one today. As Pedro said, you're gonna to have to wait until 2023 before those might might not show up. So keep that in mind. 179 dollars, though. I, I've never really looked into these. I think, like most of you at home, I'm aware they existed. I didn't learn today. I kind of thought you could charge them up with a crank, but mm. but at 179 dollars, yeah, I, I gotta say that's like in the ballpark for a device like this for me. I'm like, mm, might get one to play around. I mean, it's a lot cheaper than a Steam Deck. Uh, might have yeah. slightly slightly smaller feature set. I mean, it's that novelty pricing, though, right? Like, right. yes. I mean, it look, looks well engineered, well made. Um, that remains to be seen. Uh, but, you know, I think it will be interesting to see, you know, how developers are going to incorporate the crank into their game after they make that one. I wonder how Overgrowth is going to do it. There better be a <laughs> Sega fishing D make for this. Yeah, like, like <laughs> Bass Pro Fishing or something. Yeah, like I, I could see that if you're, if you're going to be doing fishing games. Uh, what's not a fishing game is Overgrowth, but it is open source. Yeah, so uh, Wolfire Games, you might remember them from, they used to run the Humble Bundle before they pawned that off uh, to, uh, I, I, I guess, the, now it's the Humble Conglomerate, Ziff Davis, whatever you want to call it. Um, but yeah, uh, the well, f- the original programmer uh, made Luguru, uh that was available on the original Humble Bundle, and uh, there was a sequel, uh, Overgrowth, which uh, was very much a similar rabbit fighting, run around, stab shit game. And we, 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 we used to joke about it because it was in early access for a good long while. They were charging quite a bit for it. And it seems like people didn't want to pay 25 bucks for it, so they just tossed it up on GitHub. Well, I mean, not really. This is just the game engine. All the assets and all the levels and shit, they're still on Steam. They still cost 25 bucks. But if you are someone who really likes Road and Beat'em Ups, or you can see the beautiful, perfect game in the block of marble that is the Overgrowth code base, you now have the opportunity to pick up where they left off. And I gotta say, I m- most games, when they open source stuff, they're like, yeah, here's our code. Go blah, blah, blah. Do, do whatever you want with it. Uh, they are actually accepting merge requests. So if you have improvements that you want to make to the overgrowth game you can submit them and they might make it into the game proper which is pretty cool i think yeah that is very nice and the uh the the one thing that i remember uh during the development of uh, overgrowth was they had little video series explaining what they were doing and how they were doing it there was one about the animations and how to like combine animations and make it so that once a character lands on the ground, it's not a stiff animation. It's like, yeah, you're on the ground now. No, it had a little bounce to the animation and stuff like that. They have a lot of that that is now open source. So if you're an indie developer and you don't know or you have no ideas or you're just looking for something it's like as inspiration or, you know, it's Apache, you could probably just use it. You just got to keep the license in. And if you do change something, you got to put that and clear at the top that's it uh, but it is that that that's a very good source that's a very good resource there's a lot of time and a lot of love put into um the overgrowth engine so please do use it <laughs> you know i'm going through the uh steam workshop that is uh not as jarring as i was expecting is, is there any, like, full total replacement of Crystal from Star Fox Adventures for, like, the main character? <laughs> no, no. I mean, th- this is all, like, tame. 
So, all right, all right, all right. are you signed in? <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Maybe. Yeah, that's why you're not seeing the other stuff. Okay. Uh-huh. Right. And that, and that's why we never signed into Steam ever again. Oh man, that's a cool dog. It's got some sunglasses. So everything is there. Uh, this, I think, overgrowth kind of serves as a warning to what can happen when you have a game idea, you get a concept, and you want to execute on it. But your budget's kind of an infinity symbol. Because, <laughs> you know, they are the Humble. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the, 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 I think this was, this was after the sale of uh, Humble. Well, that, that's that when happened? it got released all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah, it kind of got pushed out the door. It went from perpetual, you know, it's in development. And as they say, you know, they spent a decade, nine years working on this thing. And it kind of just got shipped after that. But... I mean, they had some cool tech back in the day uh, with like the auto skinning features and stuff like that. Things that modern engines like, you know, Unreal and Unity. I don't know if Unity's got anything like that. It might. Somebody will correct me in a moment. But yeah, uh, but it's still good to be able to go back and look at some of this stuff. Like, or make no, your own game. Like- Being an Apache license, hey, make something with this, box it up, throw in your own assets and ship it. Yeah, ab- absolutely. It's, al- it's always good to have a starting point. When it comes to making a new game, it's a mm. lot easier to tweak something that already exists than have to start yeah. from whole cloth. <laughs> Just like breaking your PlayStation controller. That's a horrible transition. No. <laughs> Pedro, do you have a prop for me? I don't have one. Are, 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 are we thing. doing the, uh, the, the Wayland are we one doing first? Back to this X is a first? yes or no answer, but we're going to get a fucking tip. I, I, yes, I have the thing, but uh, are, is, the, is the X story not first? I don't know. Is it? It is. It is. Yeah. Story there. Too late. We got to talk about this dual sense. Fine. I am so excited about this. And Pedro's went through all the trouble of reaching over to his left a little bit. Literally, there's a little stand here with a controller. I'm going to be hearing about that for weeks. It's like, oh. So, DualSense for more update for Windows is released. Why are we talking about it? Because it also works with wine and a couple of people are really really brave and they went out and they tried it so what do we think about this i mean this is if you have a perfectly functioning ps5 dual sense controller laying around and you want to do something about that uh, <laughs> this this might be able to help you out in the situation yeah. you know but hey especially doing it through wine <laughs> as much as we joke about tricky. this as much as we joke about this though uh you know Prior to this, the only way to update the firmware was to steal a PlayStation 5. Yes, and, and plug it in. That was, that yeah. was the only way. Uh, and yeah, apparently the DualShock uh, has been plagued with firmware issues uh, if you've just been using it on PC, bad battery life, connectivity, and so on and so forth. Uh, apparently it hasn't been everyone, because like, Pedro, you've had that fucker for like a I've year and I've had this now. since release. It's yeah, and- literally on release, I bought this one, and... Um- yeah, I haven't had any of the issues. May, that may, the maybe it's like a, a newer fix, version of firmware so. that that's being shipped. Maybe you got like an early one, and the later ones have the issue. Could be. I don't know, but now now you have the you have the means to fix it, uh, and you don't even have to boot up a Windows VM. That's <laughs> and, I, I, but you do have to use Proton GE or the GE version of Wine because apparently uh, just regular Wine does not work. Apparently, <laughs> mm, I, I, I'm, I'm just like surprised that it works in wine period. Right. Yeah. Right. And we were talking about that in the pre pre super shows and was like, you've uh, at some point you might reach that level of desperation to where, you know, you will at least have the firmware updater to see if you can launch it in wine. Maybe you don't want to make that commitment because you're like, you're like, eh, I don't trust this. Mm, like um, USB. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, moral of that story, like, unless you can't, um, get access to a PS5 and you have some horrific battery life issues, which I'm talking like bad and like less than an hour, you know, I don't think you're going to get like a super boost out of this. I wouldn't, I wouldn't tango with this. You, you think this would also help with some of the, uh, the uh, dead zone issues that the DS5 is also having? As I don't know. Uh, that, that seems to be a hardware problem because it's not just a dual sense. It's literally every controller yeah, coming the, out the, over the past five the, or six years. Is, isn't the Steam Deck using the same sticks or similar sticks? Oh, very similar, yeah. The, the Like, size-wise, they are effectively the same size, but yeah, there's a slightly different shape to the domes. Now, I have a real question, because I know on Steam, uh, it's got a thing to where you just calibrate the dead zone in it. And, and you it, can actually increase and decrease the size of the dead zone, yes. Yeah, it does... Uh, 
Can't you just do that if you got a problem with it? Only in Steam Input. So if you find a game that doesn't uh, Pedro, accept Steam Pedro, the only input, way to play games are on Steam on Linux. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got, you got to install Windows. That, that's that's what the people There say. are some yeah. games that will straight up not work with Steam Input. Uh, in fact, there are some games that will straight up crash if you enable Steam Input. Uh, so those games you'd probably, if they work at all with the uh, Dual Sense or the Dual Shock, even. Um, then yeah, you, you'd have no recourse, and you would there you would feel the drift because your character would move when you didn't want to move. <laughs> oh man, that that drift is fucking real. That was that was miserable. Um, all right, let's, that's the thing. Let's move on to the future because something that's always been ten years around the corner has been our good good friend, <laughs> Mister Whalen Pants. Unfortunately, <laughs> SDL, despite being ready for Whalen, the world's just not ready for Whalen, baby. It's not. They've had to revert. Way yeah, uh, preference over X11. Yeah, there's uh, there's been some uh, lingering problems with the third party software. Apparently, uh, yeah, <laughs> m- many, uh, mo- mostly with the NVIDIA drivers uh, and some yeah. of the uh, Wayland client libraries. Also, don't play too nicely with uh, what SDL is doing. So there are some upstream fixes that need to happen there. Uh, specifically, I think with LibDecor is one of the big ones. Uh, so yeah, right now, uh, if you launch your game with a uh, recent version of SDL two, it will or as, as of now, uh, with, with one including this commit, it will default to using uh, X Windows. Uh, you can, but uh, if you want to uh, prefer to uh, launch with Wayland, there is a thing you can set at in, in the code. Uh, the SDL hint video driver, you can say you can put Wayland up front, and uh, yeah, it will try to use your Wayland uh, compositor. Huh. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's, it's, it's sad. I don't but. know, man. You know, <laughs> this is why we can have nice things, right? Yeah. I understand that. I understand that. But, um, you know, again, SDL 100% ready for Wayland. That's still ready. It's like, bring it. Let's do this. And, uh, you know, that's a couple of game breaking issues when you think about it. Kind of popped up. And by that, I mean, you know, let's, you know what? Let's just go ahead and throw NVIDIA under the bus because they're partially yeah. responsible for some things. But, um, Steam overlay not working. Yeah. That's game breaking for a lot of stuff uh, with Wayland just out of the box, including Steam Mim. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, I think that's kind of a big deal these days. And here's my question to everyone: Is that just an NVIDIA Wayland thing, or is that an AMD Intel uh, Wayland thing? I, it's the actual overlay itself. If you want to use the overlay uh, in Wayland, you have to use GameScope. Mm-hmm. And game, GameScope just doesn't work. GameScope with does not work at all with an NVIDIA graphics card and because they is, are missing. Yeah, yep. <laughs> that, 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 entirely their fault. They they need they need that Vulcan extension. They're not adding it. There's like a, every every so often I'll go on the NVIDIA forums and I'll be like, "Is there an update on this thread?" And that it's just like, "Hey, still yeah, not. hey, hey, guys, hey guys, are you, are you guys doing? Yeah, we're we're thinking about doing it. We'll 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 get it done eventually." Now, what I'm trying to get clarified, all of this works. Swimmingly with AMD and uh, Intel for the for, for the most part, yeah. Uh, yep. On on my fifty seven hundred XT box, everything yep. opens, overlay, no problem. Yeah, yeah. The the Steam Deck use, makes very heavy use of a uh, game scope uh, if you're using the um. Hell, <laughs> you Nvidia. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's a reason that uh, Linus uh, painted them that particular picture. <laughs> Do you think, you know, uh, with the added motivation of like Fedora and other, um, we're like, hey, we're switching to Wayland and videos, like, but like, it, Wayland. It, 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 it's, 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 the, it's, the, that pressure is required, right? Like, it's got to happen at some yeah, point. Un, 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 <laughs> unless unless uh, NVIDIA is provided with an incentive to actually get off their asses and do something, right? Like, they're, they're not gonna. So, uh, so it's good. It's good to see that uh, Fedora and Arch and Valve are really, really pushing for this, because yeah, let, let's be real. X works, but it's also a security nightmare. It's a thirty-year-old piece of software. I think we need to. It, it, it's done its duty. We don't owe it anything. We should take it out back and. Can I do um, indirect jail rendering over SSH with Wayland yet? Uh, I'm gonna say <laughs> yes until Mir corrects me. <laughs> Here's the thing. Can you run it through X Wayland? <laughs> well, I got I, I got to ask because that is OpenGL accelerated through indirect X over SSH. This entire screen at 3040 by 2160. So that's how I run the DAW. If X Wayland picks it up, probably yeah. 
I'm, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure open SSH is going to have a poll like, yeah, SSH dash. I don't know. I don't know. Dash X and Y are taken. So yeah, maybe, maybe. capital X doubly. <laughs> I, I, I'm just genuinely curious. Don't try this at home kids. It works a lot better at 10 gigabits. Um, yeah, yeah, that 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 kind of needs that, doesn't it? <laughs> it works. Uh, you don't need ten Gs of anything for this next game, though. Uh, Cytopia. You yes. remember, like what what happened? What happened? Because I'm, I'm going to speak for all of us. I'm, I'm going to assume, but growing up playing SimCity was a fucking business. Like, we're talking Everyone like, played SimCity. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I miss I missed that one. I was I was on Sim Safari. Uh, I'm sorry you had a <laughs> faulty childhood. <laughs> uh, yeah, me, me, me too. It was SimCity and Theme Hospital. Those were like the big two. <laughs> I grew up in the lab that had the Max. They had the SimCity 2000. Or I don't know, it wasn't. Was it 2000? Because this was like the early 90s. It might have been. It, it, may, it may have been. People were using 2000 It was the one with the um, voice. Uh, Reticulating the, spines. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and the the like the when you were placing down stuff, it wasn't noise. It was someone making a, a noise with their mouth, and you could clearly tell that it was a noise coming mm-hmm. with their mouth, like the electricity. Oh. Bzz, bzz. I played the snot out of that, and uh, like that's gone now. What is there? Uh, City skylines. That's the uh, yes. There, there's the, that version of one uh, of the big ones. <laughs> there, there, there's Open TTD, the the Choo-choo. open source Woo-woo. city sim, uh, train sim simulator. simulator. Was that a train simulator? I believe so. Okay. There, 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 there is a, there is an open source SimCity clone. I know that we've talked about it. Oh yeah, GTA um, Five. <laughs> there, 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 there's the one that fucking runs in the browser. I know that. Um, All right. To the point is, uh, if you want to relive that, this is one I'd not run across before. And again, Cytopia, it is here and it's got the look, it's got the feel. It's based on SDL2 terrain manipulation, procedural terrain generation, pixel art graphics, QT based tile editor. So that's really good to see couple other planned features, but let's take a look at that. Look at that. That's some that looks very SimCity, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that looks legit. And this is their own art, you know? They're not, like, lifting anything from Maxis yeah. or EA now. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, pretty cool. Land. What? Here's another thing, though. You don't have to compile it. You don't. I mean, no? uh, uh-uh. rendering engines with C++. I was looking through, how do I build this thing? I'm like, oh, no, we just got a portable Linux build. Here, download All it. Right. Play. Oh, that, that's cool. Uh, nice. <laughs> they they do have a they do have a new release. Uh, the big feature in that is that panning the camera now works with your WASD and arrow keys. So Pedro, you can play it now. <laughs> yeah, you know if you're not going to give people the option to rebind them, let us use both, please. It's not hard. Come on. <laughs> but yeah, um, m- m- most, most of the stuff in V201, a.k.a. Jim proved, is a lot of just uh, control tweaks. Um, lots of uh, UI changes just to make things a little more uh, nice to use, which is always good. It's always good to see uh, projects care about the user experience, but especially in open source. That no, I got a legitimate question, neglected. though. Um, you know, you scroll down to the downloads and it's a Cytopia Linux portable. Why would they go through all the trouble of just doing that when they could have made a flat pack or a snap? <laughs> I don't know. Probably because Ryder. they didn't have to make either of those. Aha. <laughs> so much for playing it on the Steam it, Deck. Put it in a zip. Okay. There yeah. you go. <laughs> you could play that on the Steam Deck if it was. You can launch an uh, app image, right? Probably. <laughs> you know, you got to build this in an app image, though. Yeah, you'd have to build the app image first, but yeah. But you get the idea. I don't know. What what about like self-contained stuff? Like, I don't know the limitations of a Steam Deck. Like, I want to know whether or not you could the, run a self-contained. The, 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 I was just the going whole, to say, the, the file system the, is frozen at like root level, but anything that's in your user folder, that works the same. So anything that runs locally, like your app images, around. For the file packs. segment, because during the break, Pedro's going to try this. Or at least try to update the firmware <laughs> on his dual sense. We'll see how that goes. At the same time, from the Steam Deck. <laughs> <It'd be glorious. laughs> yeah, with, 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 with the Steam Dock. All right, coming up next, I can't believe it's not a mobile game. I got it. And neither will you. <laughs> Easily. Uh, yeah. Did you, did you look <laughs> at it? 
Welcome back to the Chairquisition. This week we're taking a look at Chestmate. What is the first thing I mentioned, the Chairquisition? Well, that's where we take a game, we uh, we run it on a bunch of different distributions. Hey, we have some slightly different hardware now. Ven has a 3060. My God, it's <laughs> it's crazy. It's a new future. Um, but yeah, uh, we 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 tested on our systems. Tell you how uh, tell uh, tell you how it ran. Tell you what we thought about it, and rate it on our highly scientific pirate approved chair based uh, metric rating metric. Uh, one chair means that it's trash. Tier two or four chairs means that it's fantastic. Uh, and Chessmate is the game we're taking a look at. It's developed by Optus Onion on Unity. You can pick it up for about five bucks. What is it? A precision tower, precision, that precision based tower defense puzzle game that makes, that focuses on optimization, control your cannon, optimize your defenses, defend your mate. Chessmate is a challenging aim based strategy game. And we got to thank Optus Onion for sending us some keys on Curator Connect. And because, as I mentioned previously in the in between segment, I'm the generous one this week, I get to go first. So on the. On Fedora 35, 64-bit with the R9 3900X and the GTX 1080 Ti, it launches out of the box. There is no windowed mode. Uh, also, by the way, it completely ignores your Unity prefs file, so I hope you have game scope if you want to play this game in a window, because that is the only way it will happen. Uh, this uh, control-wise, it uses a cursor, but it really feels like a mobile game. Clicking and dragging in this feels so alien and if you watch Pedro's uh Pedro's footage here you can you can really see that it makes more swiping with a finger would make a lot more sense in this game even weirder still because it's not on iTunes or play you would think we we've we've covered a couple of these games where uh it started off being uh like a play store or a iTunes store thing and they just put it on Steam to make some money not the case um, also, either way, it doesn't lock your mouse either, so have fun losing your shot when you accidentally <laughs> nudge your mouse out of the window and close some other stuff like Chrome or Vivaldi or something. Fun-wise, as I mentioned, this really needs to be on a phone or something. I'm not a fan of the whole shooting mechanic with mouse. It's 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 not fun. And Pedro, Pedro will go in-depth about the, the spazzy fucking reticule here. But yeah, it's it's not it's not good. The game itself is about either trying to buy yourself enough time by uh, diverting the uh, the skeleton zombie pirates around so that you have time to shoot them while your cannon recharges or reloads, or you can corral them all into a single path and then take out multiple ones with a single shot. Um, and also, each level comes with a storm mode, which seems to just be a rapid fire shooting test. It's not a lazy game by any means. It just has bad controls and it's not it's not even that like if it were on a touchscreen it would be good controls and the, the steam deck has that but I, I don't have a deck so i'm not a fan i'll give it to give it a pity fuck oh so generous all right so let's try this out on debian 11 threadripper 1920x uh sporting my new nvidia oh should have been intel but nvidia 3060 the most basic bitch of the 30 series um, wait, I take that back. They made a 3050, didn't they? Yeah. Well, uh, yes. <laughs> Fucking NVIDIA. Um, <laughs> all right. Launched out of the box. No wounded mode. Jordan, Jordan, you pointed that out. Also completely ignores the, uh, wait, I'm reading yours. God damn it. Uh, that's a habit. plagiarism. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell? I read copy. Um, it does launch. It does have that going forward. Options, as Jordan pointed out, bit sparse, uh, volume control, and just, just volume control. That's what you got. No resolution settings, no window mode, no rebondable controls. Didn't pop up in the FURPS counter, but I'm assuming it was well over 60. It was nice and smooth, but Chessmate, I got to say, it's a pioneer. It's a bit of a pioneer in one particular way, because I believe, I believe it's probably our first example of a developer waiting until development wrapped and said, fuck mobile, we're doing desktop without changing a damn thing. And that's kind of what we have here, because you know what? Dragon release does not translate well at all to your desktop dribble. And that goes double if your dribble is wearing a tracksuit like mine. That was just a miserable experience. Now, I don't know if Steam has a warning or something you can throw up on the state page because you see controller recommended, highly recommended, or VR only. This really should have one for requires the touchscreen because uh, this game needs it. That was about 18, now 19 minutes in before the situation just became unmaintainable. I'm like, you know what? I'm dying because I can't get this done with this device. I have a trackball, by the way, if you're wondering. I tried it with the X-Clone controller, which is really just an Xbox One SX, whatever, uh, gamepad. It did detect it. It picked it up. But 
is using the mouse keyboard emulation thing through Steam input. I'm like, hmm, all right. Surprising what that button mashing uh, while trying to play the game with this uh, can get up to when the cursor is on another sh- just screen because it didn't lock the cursor to the screen. That's bad. Please fix that. Um, at the end of the day, game mechanic, it's not bad. This is basic bitch tower defense. And, uh, you know, you put shit with a put shit in the way mechanic. That's the easiest way to say it. If you're watching the video version and nothing wrong with it. Jordan, you're right. It's not a lazy game. It's a well done game. It just 100% is not, in my humble opinion, not playable with uh, a mouse. It's just a really shit mechanic uh, when it would be really fun if I had a touch screen. So I'm going to leave you with this, unless you have a touch screen on your lappy, because I'm assuming you probably do, because all laptops end up coming with uh, touch screens these days. Uh, it's probably going to get refunded very shortly after you buy it. And so there's my little pro tip for that. And yeah, I just couldn't play the game after it got remotely challenged. Not even challenging. That was the other thing. I was having feels from Tomb Raider where I have to cheat with Tomb Raider when I'm playing with a controller to do those headshots where I reach over and I use the mouse. This was kind of the opposite of that where I could really, if I could just reach over and use the touchpad, I could have got through all this nonsense. But I, I didn't have that available. How about you, Pedro? Yeah, no, over here, it, it, it does launch out of the box, and um, uh, on this box, it holds 144, because, yeah, it's Unity. It is, <laughs> it's very good at actually using the full refresh rate, and uh, on the Steam Deck, it holds 60. It also launched out of the box uh, just fine on the Steam Deck, but I wiggled the analog sticks, and it didn't do anything, so it's like, okay, no controller support, fine, whatever. Didn't even think of the, um, the touchscreen, but... Uh, I played it with mouse and keyboard, and um, as you may have noticed in the footage, every now and then, that little cannon that's shooting the skeletons spazzes out a little bit. Yeah, that happens a lot, Uh, and I missed so many shots because of that little spaz attack, I didn't want to keep playing anymore. It's like, oh, I was doing really great, then the uh, the cannon spazzed out, and now I can't actively, you know, shoot the target that I was going for. That's a bit of a problem. So, um, yeah. And um, I guess, you know, just to put the proverbial cherry on top of the uh, not very good cake, uh, it creates a stupid little folder on my home directory with the developer's name. It's like, no, you do that, you get minus one chair right off the bat which is what happens. Uh, as for the fun, well, yeah, no. There, there, after all of that, there was very little fun to be had. It's it's your typical tower defense game, but you have a completely unintuitive shooting mechanic, which gave me flashbacks to some really nasty games to the 90s and early 2000s. Silver is the one specifically that popped into my mind. Uh, I really liked the story and the exploration in Silver. But every time I got into combat, I just stopped playing because it, no. And after struggling to get my brain to forget years of uh, how to aim with the mouse in order to try and make progress in, what's it called? Chestmate? Uh, I honestly, I, I wasn't feeling up to it. And then it got to a level where I couldn't click the next button. It's like, why can't I go to the next level? I, I've beat it. Okay, it was, the score wasn't perfect because the cannon spazzed out and the skeletons hit the dude once. But uh, I, I beat the level. Well, what the hell? Turns out you need to go back to the level select. Uh, click. Uh, so just click to exit. Go back to level select. Watch the cloud animations dissipate so you can reveal the rest of the things. Why? What what's the point in that? Uh, look, we can't give zero chairs to a game because that's what I feel like right now. So you get one chair, but it mm, yeah, the, no virtue of any accomplishments of the game itself. Oh, you just have it to is. excuse Pedro, who just can't appreciate artistic vision. Of putting <laughs> folders in home directories. Yes. Here's the, here's the thing that cheesed me every time is that every time you fully barricade off your dude, the game's like, oh, you can't block everything. Well, what? Why yeah. not? What's the point? You gotta leave uh, a path for the skeletons to get there, regardless. Right. I mean, if you were stuck in this bullshit universe, you'd <laughs> yeah. like, let's take another one. Um, but 
Yeah, no, I completely agree with that. The mechanic's fun. I, I like the idea. It's a fun little fuck around game, but you have to do a complete rethink on the aiming mechanic. Like something's yeah. got to be worked out to work with a controller. We know it can be done. I've seen games have similar mechanics. Like even if I had proper support for like uh, analog on mm-hmm. controller, I could make this work a lot better. Yeah, like like a twin stick type thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the proper twin stick like aiming and shooting. Yes, that sure. But and now, <laughs> you know, maybe with your Steam Deck you could do this uh, and pull back. But that's not everyone's experience with this is going to be Pedro's. Like, hey, I got the controllers built into the Steam Deck. It doesn't work with a controller. You fuck this amount. Yeah, the, the, yeah. honestly, like. <laughs> I think launching this on Steam was a mistake. This needs to be on like iTunes or yeah. the Play Store. Right. I, I did the same thing you did. I went to, uh, you know, I did the search for the name and looked for it in Google Play or just iTunes. And yeah, no, I had no, that no, same no, reaction. No. I'm like, this isn't because we see that pretty often to be just honest. You know, that's always like, okay, step one and like being upset. Oh, you took your mobile game and you didn't change anything. That's what I was thinking. And that, like, no, <laughs> this. This wasn't from, a from scratch. Right. Technically, yeah, not a mobile game, but yeah, no, it's the thing that killed it for me was me trying to aim at the skeletons and the cannons just aiming the yeah. completely wrong way as soon as yeah, I I'll, let I'll go also of lose the mouse click. Lose, losing the cursor is also really easy too. So like sometimes yeah. you'll just be like, where, mm. where am I? Why am I shooting in that direction? That's not where I wanted to point. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, well, it's, such is such. Indeed. Coming up next. Halo's a pretty cool guy. I hear he fights aliens and doesn't afraid of anything. He sent us some hate mail, so we're going to read that. Well, uh, <laughs> if you were particularly uh, curious about that game we talked about at the end of the news, not the Steam news, the actual news. Oh my god, you're still on about that? Yes. Uh, <laughs> it, apparently, it, yes, it does work on the Steam Deck, but it is uh, there is a missing library, Lib Audio 2 specifically, which, yeah, the Steam Deck just doesn't have that because Pipewire. So either the developer includes that library with the game or you're going to have to get creative like I did by copying the library out of the Lutris runtime and into the game folder and then just adding that particular folder to the library path. There, you can't install <laughs> Lutris on the Steam Deck. It's impossible, Pedro. Unheard of. To the people. You hacker. Impossible. <laughs> I bet you had to make your Steam Deck unsafe. I thought you had to like. I thought you need to turn on like developer mode. Yeah, I I, I did. Uh, well, I turned developer mode for a different reason, but that was to fix the cock up with the uh, Wi-Fi drivers because uh, if you left it if you left the 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 wi-fi driver power profile at default it would just keep losing connectivity to your wireless so uh you need to disable power saving at all yeah listen i i just i want to hear more about pedro's adventures with endus wrapper on the steam deck that this is this is fascinating (laughs) (laughs) i'm I'm gonna replay this and go to sleep to it pedro tell us how you can get in contact with us yeah, that, that does work on Windows, but well, that uh, reminds yes. me of a time. <laughs> <laughs> I put an onion on my belt because it was the style at the time. Back you in do, um, too. If you do uh, want to add your own uh, <laughs> something about these onions or uh, <laughs> Steam Deck stories, feel free to let us know. Go to linksgamecast.com, hit the contact button. There's a form you gotta fill. LGC Weekly is the uh, the show that you want to send your message to. Otherwise, uh, send um, a note for Ven and Jill on Wednesday. Ask Jordan for relationship advice. There's even an other category. It, it It's all very confusing, but there's some caveats at the top you might want to read. Do that. <laughs> drop us a link in the YouTube comments section. Wherever you might be, as Pedro said, hit us up on Twitter. You know, that's the thing. I'm also in Mastodon, if that is your jam. But JP has got a question about the main character, in uh, a video game, uh, what what's the character's name? Halo, that's his name. Yeah, Master Halo. Like <laughs> I thought it was Halo Chief. <laughs> no, it, it, it's Metroid. Anyways, uh, Master Chief Collection added the Proton EAC support. Technically, too bad the URL where the module is supposed to be fetched from returns an empty file. Oops. <laughs> hey, Let, they just not hosted. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, well, okay, 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 but like, what what URL is it? Is is it is it one of the EAC URLs or is it a Microsoft URL? Because like, I mean, I, I, either way, it's three four three's fault. They need to like update a text file somewhere. Well, we yeah. got to get a couple things out of the way. Anybody watch the uh, Master Chef um, TV series? No, I haven't. I couldn't be fucked to do it. I watched the first episode. Okay. Do I've you seen get to worse. see Master Chief's penis? I've seen. No, I know. Oh. Right? Cortana was like, God damn it, John, stop. <laughs> <laughs> Bruh, robots. Like it wasn't ready yet. Yeah. Um, two, I think there's a higher than non zero chance of uh, getting online connectivity. I can absolutely see 343, your Microsoft Studio Publish game, going, yeah, we want this working on the Steam Deck. Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, Sea of Thieves is another uh, Microsoft published game that uh, very early on in uh, Proton's lifespan got uh, multiplayer working. So, like, Microsoft is not opposed to people playing their games on Linux. Clearly, the, they've even made a point of, despite having their own platform, bringing their games to Steam and, game you know, pass. not opposing um, <laughs> people running at them with Proton. Well, this so, is what I'm thinking about, is like going to the Steam page and scrolling down and having Steam OS plus Linux support under Halo. <laughs> like, doesn't this only run on a Mac? <laughs> I mean, you once, once until Microsoft time, bought yeah. them, and then it only ran on Windows Vista. <laughs> that was Halo. That was Halo Two. Yes. Damn. I don't know. <laughs> hey, now, hey, you can play that on Linux now. Fucking Dick's Fix, man. Now, old real DX question: implementation. Um, the Master Chef Collection is that like all the Halos? Uh that is one, two, three, and four, maybe. I think. Because mm. because I know they have Halo Infinite as well, which is like their live service thing that's unrelated yes. to this. Mm. Um, well, at least they tell you the right on the 10, about. right? <laughs> like, yeah. That always Master comes out. Um, I've never played a Halo game. Uh, that is not a humble brag. I've just never been in a situation to play Halo. And uh, how does it hold up? Or how does it compare to, uh, you know, something like uh, Back for Blood, which we'll be playing, uh, which has so easy support. You, you, play, you played Splitgate, right? For a minute. The- yeah, so the 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 gunplay in that is basically identical to Halo. Yes, um, <laughs> and so, okay, uh, so, you also um, have the two weapons, and you have right, to choose so, carefully. Uh, Halo Master Chief Edition is Halo Reach, Halo One, Two, Three, uh, Three ODST, which was like the side story, and Four. So there's there's a decent amount of games in there for sixty bucks Canadian. All right. Hmm. Is anybody excited about that? Like, would you buy? I, there's a question. Would you pick up a Halo? Yeah. You, you know, you know what? Like, um, I I was not super good at Halo multiplayer back in the day because I had to play it on one of those Duke controllers. But mm-hmm. like, I could, I could, I enjoyed the story. Uh, I, I I like the I like the Halo lore. So yeah, maybe I check that out. I've, the, there's a couple of them I certainly haven't played. Oh man, okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and put the ground rules in. If we ever play Halo, all of us have to use a controller. <laughs> we we all, we all need to find like OG Xbox controllers or buy like the Mad Cat's Duke. <laughs> Oh man. Yes. <laughs> Only with the, the Duke. I'm just putting that rule in. Just in case the authentic <laughs> Halo experience. Well, it, it, it would look authentic because I watch. I remember watching people like play Halo back in the day. And I remember being you need over, a CRT uh, TV though, like a like a really small one. It was a big screen rear projection. I went over to Dar's house because this was like a big deal. We were having a hack day, and uh, he had networked a couple of his Xboxes together. Yeah, yeah, you could do that. You, there was like LAN play between two consoles. It you could do hundred percent was. He had some in yeah. the living room, and and I was like, oh, that's impressive because at the time, you know, you couldn't network a console together locally, and he had it up and running. And I remember trying to play it for a minute, and that was my first encounter with like a analog stick and i was just getting wrecked and the entire time i just i just gave it back i'm like i would fuck all of you up with a keyboard and mouse but i understand my limitations <laughs> actually <laughs> actually that, that used to be the way to get around um the having to pay for uh for online uh for online uh service for xbox was uh there, there was a vpn service you could hook into their uh, system link thing so you could do like virtual lan over over the internet oh. that's how people would do shit I how much it was from- very popular yes <laughs> I think I'm not. I don't remember if it was Hamachi. I think it may have been pre. Any, anyways. So you could pay for another service instead of paying for the. Um, so I don't think you have to pay for it. I don't. Remember. Yeah, no. The the pirated one you didn't pay for. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember if who was the first to try to normalize, which I mean, successfully normalized uh, online connectivity. You have think- to pay for. Was it PlayStation or Microsoft? That was that was Microsoft. Xbox Live used to be a subscription thing uh i think play uh I think playstation had yeah. some games you could play for game li- for free like i know final fantasy 
uh, Final Fantasy XI, you just had to pay the subscription, but like you could play, you didn't have to pay for like the service. Okay. And so. uh, PS4, there were uh, all of the free to play MMOs that were available on the PS4. You didn't have to pay PS Plus in order to play them online. <laughs> what about just like basic shooters, though? Uh, that, that, you, that would pl- you have to pay for the Xbox. game and pay for PS Plus, and uh, uh, they probably make uh, no, 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 like, uh, a <laughs> did, did did you have to pay for SOCOM US Navy SEALs? Because that was the PS2 game that had online multiplayer. I, I don't, don't remember. remember. <laughs> well, send send us some hate mail if there you we do. Go. We got all that covered. We got about that of you. We're running a little bit late. Hope you enjoyed the show. Hopefully you did just a little bit, maybe a little lot. Uh, you want another taste? We'll be back next week. You can also watch us live. You're listening to us after the fact over twitch.tv forward slash Linux Gamecast. There. There. Yeah, the whisper it secretly. Silent. There. Tenderly. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm just at Vin Stone on Twitter or at Vin on mass.linuxgamecast.com. I'm always in our Discord. That's one thing I've made it a point of. I've been in a bunch of other shows, Discords, where the people on the show are never hanging out. We're talking shit 24-7. That's how we roll. Talking shit and giving hugs. Check us out there. I'm I'm remembering shit from 20 years ago and feeling super old, so <laughs> you can watch me crumble to dust on Twitter at the Burning Fool or twitch.tv slash burning fool. Oh, where did my youth go? <laughs> yeah, no, it, it feels a little um humbling when you look at oh yeah no i used to like that when i was a kid yeah i was a kid in the 90s Ooh, grandpa. Ooh. <laughs> yeah that's okay Pedro, that's just a reminder that normal people have families now yeah and 20 year old kids yeah. <laughs> but yeah no if you want to remind me of just how old i am feel free to uh at unaccounted for on twitter i might just mute you and not deal with it <laughs> Ah, vanity, <laughs> thy name is Mateus. Oh, man, Tin God Mateus. Dying of fire, everyone. We gotta roll some credits. <laughs> I can't wait until they change it to your rectum, just like in Futurama. Uh, we gotta thank our advisors, Omegas, Artharan, our executive producers, Aldius, Bob Ram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Mike T, Jerome, Eric, Kohaku, George, and Tomash. Darkwing and, and Abstraction, uh, bringing yeah. up Chicago Kicks Ass, the Sea Monsters like Renault, Ryder X Mon, and uh, Truggy, Veritanuda, Justin, Frostclaw, Strider, Nevin, and David. Look at that. And the Death Notes, Nova, Basil, Chad, P, Romeo, Marcin, Gonna add System swine to the end Craig, Swine, Yannick, yeah, and uh, the, there was in fact a nubbin up there too. No, I added Swine. I did. Yeah, he's, he's, he's at the end. Yeah, not at the end. He's uh, at, at the end of uh, Death Notes. Yeah. Death Notes, yes. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> end of end of that section. I always yeah. got to remember, uh, remind everyone <laughs> who's watching, uh, Pedro is not the youngest. Pedro is the middle child. Yes. Yes. (laughs) Have fun. Sweet dreams knowing that. Five dudes.